Okay, good evening, everyone. So, tonight we are going to be doing 1972 to 2022. And at our next one, I know this is the question on everyone's mind, our next one is going to be April 12th, and that'll be 2022 and into the future, the next 50 years. What's that going to look like going into our bicentennial? And so at our next one, we are going to open the time capsule after our presentation. So show up here and get your seat early, you know, and it will be here at City Hall. Um, we're working out all of the details, but we'll, we'll be placing all the items out to see and uh, we'll have them, we'll try and have it filmed up there as well so people in the audience can kind of see them up close a little bit until we get them all laid out. So. Oh yeah, yeah, because y'all have been at all of them. You have been at all of them. I will, I'll get you a special council member ticket, so don't y'all worry. And I'm sure we'll bring in extra chairs. <clears throat> so if, if you haven't heard, the time capsule was found. Uh, we didn't overly advertise that it was lost, but <laughs> it has been found. It, I've laid eyes on it. I've picked it up. It's very heavy, I think. Um, Fanchon Stearns, our secretary, says it's not, but she must work out. I, I thought it was heavy. And we will, we will be opening that the second Tuesday in April. Six o'clock is when it starts in here, and it should be probably about 6.30 by the time we open it up. And we're going to be doing some fun games leading up to it, some trivia that Rachel's going to post of what do you think's inside of it, um, what do you think would be cool to put in the next one, and some of those, if you get an answer right on what you think is inside of it, you'll get a challenge coin that are our special uh, sesquicentennial coins that we have. Okay, so when we left off last time, Denison was just then celebrating our centennial, our 100th birthday, which is when they created this time capsule that we're opening up next time. So I wanted to show you a couple more photos of that just because it was a really cool celebration. Uh, this was their official seal that they had for that event. Um, they were proud of their railroad heritage. We, the lake was still really big, and then we had the serpentine um, that was just about four years old, so we were really, really proud of that. So here we are with one of the parades that they had going downtown. I don't know if y'all remember last time, but I said that the uh, high school marching band, when we got the serpentine, had to do special practices to go down it because they had to weave a little bit. So they had special practices just to do parades downtown. They had their own little jail that they set up, and. Um, the main thing was all of the men were expected to grow beards and not shave. So if you didn't, you would get thrown in this jail or this huge dunking pit. Um, and, and they would just come and get, I mean, like bank officials and just come into their offices and get them and take them outside and dunk them. So well, it was a wild and wooly time is how they described the centennial. They also had a big community-wide church service called Faith of Our Fathers. Um, we've got the brochure for that. The, the bulletin is in that display case right out there. And then this is them cutting the ribbon when they very first started celebrating. They also had a big fashion show. And I bet some of these youngsters for sure are probably still around with their outfits. I have no doubt they've probably recycled them and are using them again this year. Okay. So we kind of saw, we talked about how in 72 there was a time capsule. Well, that time capsule was supposed to go to the public library. At that time, the public library consisted of the building on the far left. Once uh, the centennial was over, plans immediately began to add on to the library. So nothing happened with that time capsule right then. That's kind of how the whole mystery started was where did it end up after that point? So. The library did get their big new edition in 1975. This was funded with $200,000 from the federal government, $200,000 from the Munson Foundation. If you remember, this was the site of the Munson home. Um, so they've always been really supportive of, of the library. $58,000 from the Rose Nower estate. The Nowers are the ones that owned the big grain mill, which is the thing that kind of looks like Rosie um, from the Jetsons over here by the viaduct. And, uh, so then after all that, we were about $44,000 short. So they created a $1,000 club and they had 44 individuals that donated all the rest of the money to help pay for the new library. And so this is what it looked like when it was first completed. And some of these, like this slide, came from 
uh, the Chamber of Commerce, they had uh, these old 35 millimeter slides. And so this is one of theirs um, that are, are really pretty cool. It shows a lot of, a lot of old scenes from Denison. Other things that happened uh, around that time, Raynall Elementary was closed and all of those students consolidated with Lamar and Memorial Hospital changed its name to Texoma Medical Center in 1976. In 1977, the Denison Cotton Mill, which had been the largest cotton mill west of the Mississippi and the, one of the largest employers in Denison, it did uh, close after decades of declining business. Um, it could not compete with overseas markets. And uh, even all the way up until about they closed, they had three shifts. It was in continuous operation all the time. It never stopped. So uh, it was a giant building down there kind of uh, Myrick and Coffin is the intersection that we see right there, just past the old um, high school, which is now Scott Middle School. One year later, the Clara Blackford and Aubrey W. Smith Foundation would be created, and our population by 1980 would be about 23,000 people. Um, another, so we're going to start seeing a lot of our foundations get created. Thelma Braun um, and the Bocklet Family Foundation was created just a year later. And um, Thelma Braun's house is still standing on the backside of Forest Park, so it's kind of kind of neat that her home's still here. An interesting thing about every foundation that Denison has is all of them were started by people that owned businesses or lived downtown. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, around the 70s, the Denison Herald also remodeled their building, so this is kind of what what it looked like over at Woodard and Burnett um, when it. They added on to the east, which is the lower building, and then remodeled the historic building and kind of closed it in um, to, to be more, more modern and with the times, like we had seen with the Serpentine was just a couple blocks away, so they wanted to, uh, to look their best as well. Recently, we did um, get those, those old letters at the top um, are back in town. They were saved, so we're gonna reuse those somehow downtown in some, some form or fashion. October 19th, 1981, Denison had one of its worst fires. Um, the cotton mill actually burned, uh, and we've got several photos of that. Uh, it had been vacant. It was going to be remodeled for a, a different industry had bought it, and then a group of investors had purchased it, and they were all going to remodel this building, and um, somehow in that process it, it caught on fire. And so by the next day, that was all that was left. And then the water tower and that big chimney there were uh, dismantled soon thereafter. And now all that's left are some of the metal buildings that uh, were accessory structures. One of our big things was our 1984 Yellow Jackets, the Miracle on Myrick. They won the Class 4A state championship. Um, my dad still talks about this. This was a big deal. Um, and uh, it, so when a state championship is won, it elevates the whole town, really, a state championship of anything. And so this kind of propelled Denison for, for quite a while um, through these next couple of years that we'll see um, some of the rougher times as the railroad is sold and that kind of thing. In 1988, the Munson Center opened at Grayson County College. So this contains the TV Munson Memorial Vineyard. And this is about three acres and it specializes in the grapes that he grew himself. It has 65 of the original varieties that, that TV Munson um, was known to have, have had. And it's still in operation today out there as part of Grayson College. And that's where they teach their viticulture classes. So this was a really big thing for Denison because it with our TV Munson tie, um, it was really big for us to be able to, to share that a little bit more and to educate the public. And it's really pretty cool if you haven't been out there to see it. This same year, um, Denison tried to become a Main Street city. It didn't work out for us in 1988, so we just decided we would pull ourselves up by the bootstraps and do it ourselves. And so we created our own Main Street initiative and created our own Main Street advisory board and you know just decided we were gonna do this ourselves and we hired a Main Street director and, and went for it. Uh, May 16th, 1988 was also a big, big day. Um, the sale of the MKT Railroad to the Union Pacific was approved by the ICC 
it immediately created a loss of 600 jobs that were relocated from uh, Denison and then many of our MKT buildings remained vacant for years um, and most of them either were demolished or burned over time. So in 1989, uh, after us trying for a year of being our own Main Street program, we were officially named a, a Main Street city by the Texas Historical Commission. And so I wanted to kind of show some photos of what, what downtown looked like in 1989 when the Texas Historical Commission came through uh, the area so that y'all can see how different it looks today. So this is in the 400 block. This is where the bargain box is today. You can still see the serpentine was still here in 1989 when they first came. And there's Barrett's in the 500 block. So a lot of these buildings that have these slip covers have all been removed. This is where the Studebaker Museum is today. This is how the Chamber of Commerce looked when they came. Um, I'm very glad that they remodeled away from this. <laughs> and this is how the depot looked. So it's kind of hard for people to imagine that this is what it looked like when, when you don't know the, the history of everything. So it used to have a park in front of it. And about the 50s, 60s, and 70s, they thought, well, this would make a really good parking lot. So let's take this park out. We can have closer parking for the offices and uh, for the, some of the rail officials. So they did, and they had this big gravel lot. Well, around the end of the 80s, Denison decided we were going to try to reinvent ourselves. We were going to uh, kind of rise above, you know. And so what we did was started a community initiative to recreate the park that was in front of the depot. It was about $300,000 that had to be raised all by fundraisers. There was no city funding that went into this. Um, it was individuals, they had a few of the foundations that helped pitch in, and they were able to turn this into this, which we have today. Um, this was designed on the original layout uh, with that fountain in the middle and those um, light posts that were around it. That was how it originally looked. And then you can see you know, how small those trees were when they were first planted. And there's kind of a, a picture there. And then uh, Main Street, one of their initiatives was to have a music to munch by. And so during lunch, they would have live music play there that you could come out and eat to. 1989, we had 24,000 residents. Um, so I told you that that sale of the MKT in 1988. So you can see uh, how it affected us. 1989, 24,200. 1990, we had 21,500. So we lost quite, quite a bit right there. December 23rd, 1989, a disastrous fire struck the 300 block. It took the life of Denison Fireman T.O. Fultz and destroyed three buildings. So this would later become the site of Heritage Park. You can kind of see a few of those there. So that's as they were cleaning it up, um, that's where Heritage Park stands today. By 1990, the Texas Main Street program um, had recommended that Denison remove our serpentine Main Street. It was too difficult for uh, upkeep because it was all upkept by uh, the business owners. And so people would run into these walls right here and it was just getting really expensive. It was a lot to maintain and it, it, it just wasn't financially feasible for them. Um, also, we had always had a straight Main Street, so they, sell, they felt that that would help our historic district um, be able to get back to our roots a little bit. So I kind of wanted to show you all this picture because it shows the intersection of Main and Austin Avenue and you can kind of see how difficult it was for people if you weren't from town to realize where you were supposed to turn, how you're supposed to get through there and across and um, this little wall here uh, suffered quite a few, uh, <laughs> a few missing bricks over its life. So what they started with was the 100 block got remodeled first and the city of Denison kind of helped pay for that and show what it could look like. They added new brick sidewalks, these new benches, um, kept some of the trees and uh, it made, made the local news. You can see that's 
either K10 or KXII with their video camera right there and their awesome windsuit uh, ready, to, ready to roll. And so what the Main Street Advisory Board and Downtown Denison Inc. decided at that time was to go ahead, redo the rest of the street and all of the business owners would pay to have that redone. Um, they all pitched in once again and paid for the entire street to be, to be done. Now, one thing that they did do in front of every building, the sidewalk went straight. And then they had a separate sidewalk poured that made the, the curvy serpentine. So they kept that straight sidewalk. So when people tell you they missed the serpentine, it's still there. It's just the straight piece of sidewalk. That's all that's left. So, uh, 1991, the W.J. Smith Wood Preserving Plant closed. So this opened about 1928. They made all of the railroad ties for the MKT Railroad, and they made a lot of telephone poles and other things that would be soaked in creosote. Uh, a lot of people uh, remember the smell of the creosote. <laughs> if you lived on that side of town, drove down that side of town, um, so this is right off of Morton Street. Back there in the distance, that's where the KD soccer fields are. That curved street right there at the top left-hand corner is Crawford Street. Um, but all that's left today is, is kind of a field with some trees. And so it's kind of hard to imagine that that's how immense of an operation this was. Um, but they were a really big employer. And uh, after the railroad left, they just couldn't sustain their business model. Other things that happened this decade, 1995, the new Hopewell Baptist Church at 601 West Bond was dedicated. They built right across the street from their historic church and our population started rising again. By 2000, we had a population of 22,773. Um, and that same year, we did also see Terrell High School was demolished because the new Terrell Elementary School that we see today at Austin and MLK had been built down at the bottom of that that hill at the, at the end of that lot. So I did kind of want to show you all a photo of how City Hall used to look um, near the, the 1990s, uh, all throughout the 70s and 90s. Um, this is where the police station is today before it was remodeled. Uh, the city services moved from here to the old Southwestern Bell Building, which is over on Chestnut, and then we remodeled this building, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. 2007, the Denison High School in the 700 block was demolished. And the uh, Universal Health Services acquired Texoma Medical Center. So what this allowed for was the uh, creation of the Texoma Health Foundation, which is how we got Texoma Health Foundation Park um, and a lot of other initiatives that are taking place in our community. 2008, the Hopewell Baptist Church that I told you about, which was, um, there's their new church right across the street that they built in 1995. This one had remained vacant, and so it was demolished as well. And the site became the home of Terrell uh, Griggs Marshall Legacy Park, and uh, remains so today. And that signpost contains the bell from the original church, and then some of the bricks and the column pieces as well. In 2009, we got our new Texoma Medical Center. It was complete at a cost of $135 million. And our population stood right at about 22,682. If you all remember back around that time, um, we also uh, passed a pretty significant bond election in Denison for the school district. So Lane Elementary and Golden Rule Elementary were both closed at the end of the 2012 school year. In 2013, the WPA stands and the locker rooms at Munson Stadium were demolished to make way for new improvements. <clears throat> this included over $5 million in improvements, which $3 million came from Denison ISD, a million came from the WB Munson Foundation, and $800,000 from the public, um, giving private donations, uh, such as the Gerards also, they donated a million dollars um, from their family as well. Does anyone remember what the, which Munson that stadium is named after? So that one's W.B. Munson Jr. So that was Mr. Munson's son. And his big, big things were he was on the school board. So he wanted uh, new elementary schools like Peabody, Raynall, 
and he wanted a place where our students could have recreational activities. So he died in 1935 at the age of 50, and the school district and the community got together and decided to name the football stadium after him since he had done so much work to get it, get it going. Um, this improvement also led to Forest Park being redone with a new restroom, um, new signage, and a new playground as well. In the fall of 2014, classes began in the new 360,000 square foot Denison High School, which has its own, that Smith Foundation that I talked about, they helped pay for the auditorium that went in that new school, which looks a little like that. Uh, the historic 1874 bell that had been in Denison's very first school also made its way to this school and stands out front. It has its own little uh, stand in matching brick that matches the high school. Um, 2016, we had our first public meeting for designing downtown Denison. It seems like it was just yesterday, doesn't it, Donna? <laughs> Um, and then in 2018, uh, we made history, well, she made history in that Janet Gott was elected our first female mayor ever for the city of Denison. In March of 2018, we had a new TMC ER and a $50 million expansion opened that created a new level two trauma center and a neonatal ICU. Then that following August, just later that year, that Texoma Health Foundation that I talked about, we were able to do a public-private partnership between us, the developer of Gateway Village, and with Texoma Health Foundation to create THF Park. It's 80 acres and it costs $16 million to build. It has uh, softball fields, soccer fields, baseball fields, splash pads, volleyball, it's got all the works. Um, and it's, it's a really, really great uh, community park that's, that really serves our entire region. That same year, we also did open this building, City Hall. It was the first time that all of the city offices had been able to be under one roof. We had always had, you know, the water department was in one building and this and that, and so we're able to get everyone here under one, one spot. In 2019, the 300 block was damaged by fire. This was in October. So unlike in the, the fire of 1989 where we made that a park, this one will be uh, restored with buildings. And there are several of those in the works right now um, that we hope to have up really, really soon. So that's always a, an exciting part. January 27th, 2021, we got to uh, see the first uh, phase of D3 and we got to break ground. Just so y'all know on this, those travel lanes are 11 feet wide. The standard travel lane on an interstate, per the interstate highway system, is 12 feet. So it's one foot less than when you go 75 miles an hour on the interstate. So I promise you, it's wide enough. I promise. So there we had our groundbreaking. I got really excited and I threw my shovel full of dirt before everyone else. So this is the only good picture I have because the other one, my dirt's just up in the air. And then these are what the improvements looked like soon thereafter. And then we got to open up the very first portion, which was Houston Street, which got redone with a new concrete street and new um, ADA accessible sidewalks and, and different things like that. The biggest thing we were most excited about was the new drainage system, though, um, that had always plagued downtown for 155 years, literally. Uh, we had to put in a six foot by nine foot drainage pipe. So it's tall enough that you could stand in it is how big these drain pipes are. And uh, it did require digging through, how many feet was that? Seven or nine feet of rock? At least, at, at least nine feet of rock. And I mean a solid bedrock. And that's why for 150 years, the pipes had always been laid on top of it and it never drained properly. And uh, so we're really, really proud of this portion of, of D3. And that brought us all the way up to now. And then the next one, 2022 and beyond, we're gonna talk about developments that have been approved and that are ongoing throughout our community, how they're gonna kind of change our, our, uh, the face of the town a little bit, you know, with, with some new housing and uh, new things that are planned and we're gonna open up that time capsule. So it's gonna be really, really exciting. 
Um, so make sure to be here. Do y'all have any questions? Anything? Yes. Down there at the corner by the depot, mm -hmm. there was a Jefferson Highway sign that pointed two directions. What could happen with that? We saved any signage. The Jefferson Highway sign, we saved all the signage. We just haven't put it all back out yet. But that's the one that Melanie, you're talking about the one Melanie Truxell went back when she was here and had the Jefferson Highway Association come through and we had that sign placed. Yeah, it just hasn't made it back up yet. But we have, we, we took everything down. Mm -hmm. So there, there are some things that haven't registered with us yet. <laughs> like Brian found one that was kind of in the pathway because there's some little tweaks that have to be made. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can point those out to us and we'll make sure. But TI was really good with storing things. There's also um, over there in their lay down lot mm -hmm. across the street, there's a historic marker that they're protecting that will be put back there. Yeah. yeah, so part of the best thing about them is they're methodical and they don't just rip stuff up. They're going to take it. And they're going to lay it in their yard, um, and they've saved everything like that um, is how they're they're kind of keeping it and storing it. So yeah, stuff like that will definitely come back up because that's part of our history. That'll be in the chamber presentation too, because they were a big part of getting the Jefferson Highway here. Any other questions? Did you plug the chamber? Uh, we will. So John Acres of the Eisenhower Birthplace State Historic Site and I will be doing the Chamber of Commerce, will be going through their history on Thursday evening. Um, the presentation starts at six at Rustico. At 5.30, they're allowing everyone to go in and have, um, it's buy your own drinks and food and stuff like that. They're not requiring reservations, but they're requested if you, just so they can get a head count of who all will be there. Uh, but it will detail the history of the chamber from its very beginning and kind of the groups that worked to start it all the way up until till now and it's really really cool um, it started when they they remodeled their building and um, Diana Theol their uh, CEO had some boxes of history she wanted me to keep safe and one of them had their minute book in it so of course I came made a hundred copies of all of it and started reading it uh, and told her you know this history is really cool so now we're we're getting to do their history for them uh, and so we'll be doing that and then we have all kinds of Denison 150 things planned throughout the year that we'll do some more uh, history celebrating. We're going to be changing out these uh, history displays, so you have to make sure and come back to City Hall and see what, what the new history uh, pieces look like. And we'll probably have a display on the time capsule and uh, everything like that. It's going to be cool. Any Doc other? Holiday. Doc Holiday will be the last weekend in April. The 30th, okay. I know all the history dates, but I'm bad at dates. You can ask my wife. Um, so it will be the 30th, and we have so much planned. There's gonna be a parade this year. Um, we invite everyone to dress up in period style, which if you went to the very, the chamber gala that they had, you've got, you've got a lot of competition this year for the uh, style show, because they, they really brought it. Um, so it, it's a fun day starts that morning and we've got events all throughout the day and there's going to be the arts council is having a um artist village and different things like that so we're still looking for artisans yes so if you know of an artisan they can reach out to the um, denison arts council and and they'll get them all fixed up and in at the end of this month we're going to have a dedication ceremony for the major butler uh, mural that's going up over here at Chestnut and Burnett. Um, he was from Denison, graduated from Terrell High School. Uh, he played defensive end, I did find out in the newspaper, so I thought that was kind of cool. And uh, he went on um, to become a, one of the Tuskegee Airmen. And so we are celebrating him. He was named a distinguished alumni for Denison High School last year, and uh, so we're having a mural commissioned uh, along that Stephen Bohall, who also did the Eisenhower mural over there, uh, is going to do it. So there will be a big dedication ceremony at the end of this month. March 26th? 26th, I think. Okay, at 1. March 26th at 1. Is that the new mural that they want? Yes, with the airplane. 
Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. He's very talented. And the artist is from Denison as well. He, uh, he's an alumnus, so it's uh, kept it all in the family there. Uh, in the next, so for the next 50 years, we're going to hear about the redevelopment of the TMC lot. We're going to hear about new developments out by the high school. Um, we're going to, so I'm, I'm, those are going to be the starting things. We're going to talk about some things that are going to be in our, rec in our close future. Um, and different housing developments that are going to be along the Katy Trail. And then we're going to go with some things that I think are going to happen, what I think, uh, how I think our community is going to look. I'm going to give you my prediction. Crystal and then I'll, ball. yeah, it's my, my own crystal ball. And then Nash will have to see if they come true or not when he's 50. Uh, and so that's kind of what it's going to include. But, and then one thing we're going to, hopefully if we've got a little time, is see what people want to see in the future and kind of have a little bit, just a little fun discussion of, where do you think we'll be in 50 years? And then we're going to open that time capsule. And if it's, it, we assume it's got letters in it. So if it has letters to people that are in the audience or the mayor will be here, if it's got a letter from the former mayor to the current mayor, those will be able to be read right then. I'm hoping that Mayor Gott will read hers out loud. So it'll be really cool to see what that mayor's advice is and what they thought. and. You know, if they thought we struck oil under the old city hall or something. So it'll be really, really cool. Uh, the mayor at that time, um, so Jerdy Gary became mayor at the very end of 72 on into 73. And then before that, and I just looked it up today in case someone asked me. Um, it was Joe Gay was the mayor in 68. I can't tell you who the mayor was right before, in between those two. Um, but we plan, so the plan is to try to have descendants of people. Um, some of these people, if they're still living, have them come as well. Um, Rachel's heard from our centennial queen that we had in 72 that she would like to, like to be part of our festivities. And um, we've, we've heard from several other people, so. Jack Lilly uh, was there. We've got a picture of him when he got dunked because he did not have facial hair. So uh, some pretty exciting stuff. Okay. Well, I told you all tonight would be a little quick one because it's, it's more of our, our history that's already taken place really quickly uh, that, that just happened. So most of us have lived it. Um, but you'll have to come to the next one. That's going to be really, really exciting. And there'll be cupcakes. That's why there's no cookies this time. I'm saving up for cupcakes. <laughs>